If you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lamb. If you walk in freedom, if you bear his name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Well, sing the song forever and amen. How the angels cry. Holy, all creation. kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. I want you to see your house today. I want you to see your room today. I want you to see where you live today. 
And then I want you to proclaim, thy kingdom come. In earth, where I live, as it is in heaven. And every demonic realm leaves my house today. Through that name of Jesus. Leaves my house today. In Jesus' name. Blood covered. Blood covered. Leaves my house today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now I want you to see where you go to school or where you work. Where you are Monday morning. Thy kingdom come. Where I am. Monday morning. Thank you, I have greater authority than any other name because I have the name of Jesus. And his name is higher than any other name. Every name is below his name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, yeah, let me do the announcements and then we'll do the offering because they're short. Good to see everybody here today. Okay. You can put up whatever one you, uh, you can put up the uh, Rise Up one. Rise Up starts Thursday. Is it Thursday or Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Starts Thursday in the city. I was on uh, uh, Zoom with Sammy, who organized, you know, Sammy Robinson, and uh, a small group of people praying, and they were the, pretty well the prophets, you know, the ones that just don't pray, they proclaim, and they see things, and all that exciting stuff. And, um, and as of as Friday, there was 1,500 people coming from every province in Alberta. This isn't just coming to see a good speaker. If I was going to go see Chris, I'd go to California. <laughs> That's where he is, right? I'd go to Reading, you know, not Edmonton turning fall. Uh, there we are. So, you know, I mean, great speakers, mind you. But even in the proclamation, they all had the sense that God was really doing a pivotal thing in the city that would go across the nation. A pivotal thing. Uh, sons and, you know, sons and fathers and daughters, that kind of thing. Uh, but also interesting, because I love this stuff, that all the leaders and stuff, because there'd be lots of pastors there, that everyone would come in low. That means come in humble. <laughs> that means, because I, I was seeing people jockeying, you know, to, to get in position. There was a little bit of room in there trying to get in, you know. Because people are people, you know. It's just so irritating, but people are people. <laughs> yeah, tell me, yeah, how do I really feel? I don't know. And um, anyway, but you know, everyone began to pray the same stuff. Uh, that we would humble ourselves, and it's a time of connection. It's a time of the church. It's a time of, of the ecclesia. You know, it's a time of, of uh, us gathering together under his banner, not us promoting. And so, and Sammy, of course, is amazing at that. Like, he has that heart, so he's a pretty awesome guy. And so, I, I just want you to know that 1,500 people as a Friday were coming to Edmonton, and you live in Edmonton. So just a thought. You can't go and um, you can't go to the door. You have to, you have to go online, rise up. It's uh, $60 for adults. I believe it's 30 for teenagers. Kids under 11 are free. And uh, Seven? Sorry? Yeah, seven o'clock Thursday. And you know, then it goes all the way through. Uh, it's three days. Three days. 
And so I know some of you work, so, but they have evenings, you know, they have all kinds of stuff going on. So um, I'm just encouraging you, if you can, be there, okay? Um, if you really feel to go and you don't have the money, uh, talk to me personally. I don't want a big lineup, okay? Because it's my money, not the church's num money, but I really feel, um, especially for the young adults, if they don't have the money, that you need to be there. You do. You need to be there. And also, the next, next one. <laughs> so if you don't get to be there, Sunday morning, we have an amazing minister that is coming for the conference, and he's going to be at our house. Uh, Sean G Gaby, and he's from Ottawa. Got a tremendous ministry, uh, in not just a church ministry, but also to the marketplace. He's a motivational speaker as well as a preacher. And so we get blessed Sunday morning. So I tell you, we're blessed here in this house. We get some of the best people through. Uh, so be sure you're here Sunday morning. And be praying for the conference, the, the Spirit of the Lord. You know, that we know the angels are coming in. We know, we know God's going to be doing stuff. We know God's going to be settling things. We know God's going to be turning things in the realm of the Spirit. Because it's not just about Edmonton. Edmonton is a birthing place. Most of you know that. Edmonton is a birthing place. We birth things in Edmonton. They try their places, can't get it going. They come to Edmonton, gets going. Because it's a birthing place for good and evil, by, by the way. But it's a birthing place. And so we're, so it's a birthing place for the nation, for the nation. And so we're very thankful to be in that position. So to host all these people, really. So that's why it's our, it's our city, our authority, so our prayers count. So just pray that whatever God wants to do, that he'll have the freedom to do it. Amen? Because it'll affect you, it'll affect our nation. And our nation needs to be affected, as do you. So, praise God. Okay. Thank you, Father. Matthew 10 and 7. It says, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. I've been preaching on that for a few weeks. I could preach on it till the end of the year. There's so much on it. but The kingdom of heaven come, has come near. Has come near. This is Jesus speaking. So when the kingdom of heaven comes near, what happens? Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. So otherwise, power stuff. Power stuff. When the kingdom of God comes, the kingdom of heaven reigns. These things happen. These things happen. So if the kingdom of heaven isn't reigning, <laughs> what's, the, what's the opposite of that? Sickness and disease and torment. So if you, have, if you follow after the kingdom of heaven, if you're in the kingdom of heaven, then you're bringing freedom, you're bringing healing. Even if you're not laying hands on people, even though I think you should, even if you're not laying hands on people, you don't know what your presence is doing. If you believe the kingdom of heaven reigns in you, that Jesus Christ reigns in you, you do not know what your presence is doing. And so when you're going in somewhere, it's not about how cute you look. <laughs> Even though looking cute's good. But it's not about how cute you look. It's not about how much money you got. <laughs> it's not even about, you know, where you are in the totem pole. It's about the kingdom of heaven in you and you have greater spiritual authority than anything that's there that's why we need wisdom how to walk in it wisdom what to do in it hallelujah thank you father praise god and sometimes you're in solitary things you know like a truck driver you know your your truck is the kingdom of heaven going down that road hallelujah what's it doing who's it praying for you know what town are you blessing i mean we got so much authority Freely you have received, freely give. So it's, you've received it. You've already received it. Freely you, the kingdom of heaven has come near. You have received it. And the lie is, the lie is you haven't. That's the lie. 
So we don't take our dominion, because kingdom's also dominion. We don't take dominion, because we're not believing that we've already received it. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. So he's sending them the out two by two. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff for the worker is worth his keep. The worker is worth his keep. He says, and then, isn't that interesting? That in the kingdom of heaven, you don't have to worry about supply. That in the kingdom of heaven is supply. I mean, he's not telling all of us now in scripture, oh, that's what I got to do. Get rid of everything and start traveling. And uh, there has people, God has told people to do that. I know that. But he's, he's saying, listen, when you read this, your dependency is not on gold or silver. Your dependency is that he's looking after you because you are part of the kingdom. You are part of the kingdom. Remember, years ago in Hong Kong, large church in Hong Kong, pray for Hong Kong, but a large church in Hong Kong. And uh, he sent, I think it was 10 people from his church to go to a place, a Muslim nation, and to find the man of peace that Venice was talking about today. Find the man of peace, go to his house, and begin to evangelize. I say, how do you find a man of peace? Well, the Lord leads you. So they all found their man of peace or together or separate. And they had absolutely revival. They had absolute revival. Why? And and because the the preacher says, listen, I'll come there in six months to do meetings. I mean, I think they gave them $250 each. But they... Totally understood this scripture. That God supplies the need. When you're doing God's stuff, he supplies the need. And they, and they took him, praise God, they took him at his word that this is what God wanted and away they, away they went. Now, if I told you to go somewhere, I'd give you 250 bucks and I'll be there in six months to do a meeting. That's what it was like. I may talk to some of you after the service said, 32, in 32 it says, I love this scripture. Do not be afraid, little flock. Do not be afraid, little flock. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. That God is pleased to give you the kingdom. So don't reject the power of the kingdom. Don't reject that he hasn't given it to you. That God is pleased. You make God the father happy that you have received the kingdom. So in the kingdom of heaven, we freely receive. In the kingdom of heaven, we freely give. In the kingdom of heaven, we depend on the supply of God. Thank you, Father. We depend on the supply of God. God has wanted to put us in a totally different realm because we're moving into totally different times. And he wants us, he's shifting, he's teaching, he's moving. Everything is changing. Everything is changing. And in the realm of the spirit, God would never leave us behind. He actually wants us ahead. He wants us ahead. That's why we have to know him. We have to know him. We have to know him uh, in giving and uh, and accepting that he's the one that looks after us. Uh, You know, he is the supplier of all our need. We We have to know that. Not when we have a salary. Praise God for salaries. You know, thank God for salaries. He supplies through the works of our hands. The works of our hands, a diligent hand maketh rich. But I tell you what, he's pushing us over for a dependency on him. That whether you have a salary or you don't have one. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. That dominion supplies your needs. You're an ambassador of the kingdom. And we know as an ambassador, the home country pays the wages. The home country pays the needs. The home country even looks after those who are in different, different, you know, if you're you're 
uh, in pa if you were in Pakistan today and there was a problem, the, if you were a Canadian ambassador, it's, it's Canada's purpose. Canada has to come and get you. Has to come and get you. You know what? Some of you may feel like you're in an island right now, <laughs> kind of by yourself. But I've got news for you. If Jesus Christ is in you, you are an ambassador of his, and he's coming to help you. He's coming. He's coming to help you. Because no matter where you are, you're a part of the kingdom of God. Amen? God bless you in your giving today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you it's alive. That your word is alive. You said your word is spirit. And it's truth. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of the word today. Thank you, Jesus. You are the word today. We thank you for breaking things that we believe that aren't true. We thank you that you can deliver us from religion. In Jesus' name. So, you know, what is religion? Well, it's a belief system that isn't true. And uh, Christians have religion. We can have religion. We can believe things that are not true. Uh, you know, that uh, we can believe that we, <coughs> we can, <coughs> excuse me, we can operate from the knowledge of good and evil. This is good, this is evil, this is good, this is evil. Or we can operate from the tree of life, that when you have life in you, you don't want evil. Your decisions are all, you know, I don't want this. I don't want this. And you can have a, you can have a altar call saying almost the same words. But, so, but some calls are, you know, you feel bad for what you did, but you get up and do the same thing. Or you're not free because you're convicted of evil or sin, but you need to be free of it. And light delivers dark from dar us from darkness. And so it's a dependency of grace. It's a dependency of depending on God's power where you have no power. It's not you pulling up your boots, I'm going to do better, going to do better. No, God, I'm, I'm getting closer to you because I'm going to do better. Why? Because he's come in to strengthen you. And if you want to be strengthened, you know, what's that saying? If you, between the two wolves, the good wolf and the bad wolf, you know, how do you have victory? Well, you only feed the good wolf. Let the bad one die. Let the bad one die. It's what we, that's where our part comes in. What do we, what do, we do? That's our part. What do we do? Well, we're not filling our minds up with stuff that's, you know, you shouldn't be filling your mind up. I don't even tell you that. You already know. If the Holy Ghost is in you, man, you know. You know. I've told this story before, but yeah, Broy's not in here. Good. He doesn't like it, me telling this story. But, but when he was a little kid, couldn't even talk, barely talk. And Faith would be watching something on TV. And it could have been who knows what. But he'd come over and go, rubber arm, hallelujah, mommy, hallelujah. And she goes, I can't watch this. She has to turn it off. And he'd, he'd have her put on uh, the video of him when he got dedicated. And he'd sit mesmerized over that over and over and over again. So what goes into the eye gate, man? So important, so important. Of course, I'm telling on faith, but she can take it. I'm sure it wasn't some horrible thing, but not in his sense. You know, he's just so, so sensitive. Thank you, Father. Romans 14, 17, NIV. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy. In the Holy Ghost. I, I love that scripture. One thing that, that righteousness means, God's way of doing right. So the, the kingdom of God is not what you're eating. 
even though you could be more wise, probably. Is that, is that good English? No, it's not. We could be wiser lots of times, maybe in the way we look after ourselves, because this is the body uh, that carries the, you know, the Holy Spirit. Uh, but is that, that's, you know, that, that's not our point. We're not out there to say, do this and do that. Eat this or don't eat that. What are we here for? God's way of doing right. That's what we're here for. And interesting, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this is not misery in the Holy Ghost. Uh, this is, isn't, isn't, oh, the Holy Ghost is coming. This, you know, what am I going to do? The Holy Ghost comes. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, because that's where the Holy Ghost wants to take you to, is peace and joy. So if you're stuck in, in sin or stuck in, in uh, wrong thinking, the Holy Spirit is going to come. Yes. Talk at you. Because he wants to take you to peace and joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And, you know, John the Baptist and Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God has come. It means change the way you're thinking. Repent. Change the way you are thinking. Thank you, Father. I'm going to go in the, the Passion Bible here. In Hebrews 12, come on, behave. Hebrews 12, here we go. No, it's Hebrews 11. Be patient with me, I'm old. I'm kidding. I don't believe. I don't feel that way. Okay. Okay. So Hebrews 12. Let's start at 18. This is in the Passion Translation. For we are not coming as Moses did to a physical mountain with its burning fire, thick clouds of darkness and gloom, and with a raging whirlwind. Can you imagine? God said to Moses, come up here. This is what he's coming up here to. And you can see why the children of Israel said, no, you go up, Moses. You go. <laughs> we'll stay here. You go, Moses. We're not those who are being warned by the jarring blast of a trumpet and the thun thundering voice, the fearful voice that they begged to be silenced. They couldn't handle God's command that said, it is so much as an, as so much as an animal approaches the mountain, it is to be stoned to death. Because God called it a holy place. The astonishing phenomena Moses witnessed caused him to shudder with fear. And he could only say, I am trembling in terror. By contrast, thank you, Jesus, we live today. Thank you, Jesus, we live after the cross, not before the cross. By contrast, we have already come near to God in a totally different realm. The Zion realm, the church state realm, where God reigns realm. We've already come there. We've already come because of Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus Christ in you, if you've asked Jesus to come into your life, if you acknowledge him as the son of God and that you thank him, that you want him in your life, you're going to follow after him, you're going to get in your word, you're, you're already in. It says if you proclaim who he is, the salvation becomes yours. For we have entered the city of the living God, which is in the new Jerusalem in heaven. We've already gone into a realm of the spirit. You know, we, we caught so much in the natural realm, but we are in the spirit. We are in the spirit realm. I've often told of a story when Rita and I were uh, in BC and a lady was seen in the spirit realm. And it's too long a story to go into, but it was, it was so interesting. But that she was going up the stairs into the heavenly kingdom and she was seeing it with her eyes she she saw seeing it with her eyes but she saw us Rita and the two other ladies are in the room she saw us also going up the stairs so in the realm of the spirit we were all moving into that realm not just her and we and we ended up in the platform out the heaven's gates and all kinds of activity it was just pretty amazing but it's the realm of the spirit, not a natural realm. 
Thank you, Lord. We have joined the festival, festival gathering of myriads of angels in their joyous celebration. And that's one thing I remember from, from that time is that she saw angels start to do cartwheels. And, uh, and, it, was, and it was over salvation on the earth. And they were just flipping. And they didn't have to go like this. They just flipped. As members of the church of the firstborn, all our names have been legally registered. You have Christ in you. Your name has been legally registered in the heavenly realm. You are legally registered. They don't have to, you know, when you pass on, they're not looking for your name. Oh, sorry, not here. You're legally registered. What, what amazing thing to be thankful for. As citizens of heaven, and we have come before God who judges all and who lives amongst the spirits of the righteous who have been made perfect in his eyes. And we have come to Jesus who established a new covenant with his blood, sprinkled upon the mercy seat, blood that continues to speak from heaven forgiveness. A better message than Abel's blood that cries from the earth for justice. Make very sure that you never refuse to listen to God when he speaks. For the God who spoke on earth from Sinai is the same God who now speaks from heaven. It's the same God. Now, thank goodness, we have the realm of grace and the blood on our side. But it's the same God. You know, when Jesus returns, he's not coming back as a lamb. He's not coming back as Mr. Nice Guy. He's not coming back as a baby. When Jesus comes back, it is a time of judgment. And he will judge the earth. Now, judge means can also be between good and bad. It's not everything it's evil, but he comes back. He'll come back. You know what? He made the earth. The earth is his, he paid for it, and he's going to do the final cleaning. That's why we want to make sure as many people as possible, as many people as possible, are coming back with him. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you know it's really important to, 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 to really minister the love of God. And it says the goodness of God brings a man to repentance. But you know he's not Santa Claus. He's not Santa Claus. Make a wish and hope to get it. He's not a jolly fat guy in a red suit. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's your king. He's your king. That king. Lord of Lords. He's the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Not, no one like him. The devil comes nowhere near him. The devil it maybe can go, you know, the same level as Gabriel, the angel, but he can, there's no nearness to who he is. And that's who your dad is. Your brother's the toughest guy on the block. Come on. And he wants us to believe it because belief comes, faith comes, and then you, you stand in a position of dominion and not a position of fear. You stand in the place of dominion instead of giving in to whatever comes against you. You're in a place of dominion. And I see that Jesus came to give you dominion. We've talked about that in the previous weeks. He gave you dominion. The dominion that Satan got from mankind Jesus came and gave back to you. So you have dominion. The church has dominion. Dominion. The ecclesia has dominion. You know, it's, it's so important. I think, you know, things are changing. Uh, even the spiritual realm, how we fight in the spirit is changing. Because it's not just about casting something out of someone, you know, have them throw up and they're good. I don't know if you ever went through that realm, but I did. And, uh, and it was powerful. Saw so people, I tell you, powerful. 
remember a girl that we were praying for, and she started crawling around the, the floor like a snake, her mouth, her tongue going like this, you know. <laughs> well, you don't see that every day. Thank God you don't see that every day. But, you know, it's, it's bigger than this. It's bigger than individual stuff. See, we're going to have to battle dominion stuff. Satan has dominions. You know, I think of our politician right now in our province. My goodness, she's coming up against dominions. She may not know it, but we as the church should know it. And we should be praying for her. Seriously, praying for her. She's gone in where no man's gone before. You know, she's, um, you know, and I don't know where she is spiritually. Uh, she hasn't got all her ducks in a row. But I tell you what she's doing. She's making stands. She's the first. Anyway, I won't go there. I'll just get too political. But, but thank God for our premier. Really. We bless her right now. In the name of Jesus, we bless her with strength. We bless her with wisdom. We, Father, we pray that you'd keep the evil man and woman away from her. And that, Father, you would bring those with wisdom and understanding, those that care for people, those that have, have, uh, uh, have answers, those that have answers, those that have answers in Jesus' name. Bless her health. Protect her, Father. Protect her home, protect her finances, protect all those things that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Don't believe everything you read. And then it says in 26. Or did I miss that out? Uh, For the God who spoke on earth from Sinai is the same God who now speaks from heaven. Those who heard him speak his living word on earth. Those who heard him speak the living word on earth. See, it's what we do on earth. Not about heaven. It's what we do on earth. Thank you, Father. Found nowhere to hide. So what chance is there for us to escape if we turn our backs on God and refuse to hear warnings as he speaks from heaven? The earth was rocked at the sound of his voice from the mountains, but now he has promised, once and for all, I will not only shake the systems of the world, it's that dominion, not only the system of the world, but also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm. There's a major battle going on, and it's not going to get lighter. We may not see it all or sense it all, but there's a major battle going on. Now, the phrase once and for all clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking, that is, the old order. So only what is unshakable will remain. Since we are, receive, since we are receiving our rights to an un unshakable kingdom. Amen. See, we've received rights to an unshakable kingdom. Yes. No matter what's going on, we have an unshakable kingdom. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We should be extremely thankful. This is that Thanksgiving. We should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights in his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with awe, for our God is a holy and a devouring fire. Not that timid little baby. Not that timid little baby. And I've seen, diff you know, not often, but um, I've seen different times where the Lord comes and tries to get someone to turn from their ways. And uh, he really tries. <laughs> he does all kinds of stuff. And that person doesn't turn. And, you know, then their end their is disastrous. Sometimes death, all that, all that kind of thing. I've watched it for all these years. That God, the Holy Spirit and the drawing of the Lord 
really wants to pull people into that joy and happiness, into that release, into that taking authority on the earth, into that uh, your calling and purpose and having it fulfilled. And then there's the point that he has to let people do what people do. Now, if that person has people praying for him, I tell you what, I don't think they're, I don't think they're going to be lost. God's going to get them. Some way or other, God is going to get them. Because we believe in our prayers for salvation, right? But we have to be very sensitive that sometimes being hit between the eye is what some people need. Now, don't you be all black and white and go after people because... You know, religious people are more dangerous to the faith than any other kind of people. Way more dangerous than, you know, atheists and stuff. And, uh, but there is a time of speaking. You know, I've told a story about during the Jesus movement, and there was a, a man that I was witnessing to. We had a Jesus house up, to, up, I don't know why we had it there, but anyway, we had it in the worst place in town on 95th Street. And we had a girl's house and uh, it's kind of a coffee shop, drop-in thing. And this guy was really stubborn. And so I ended up talking to him in our kitchen. It's probably about 3 o'clock in the morning. And when I, said, when I said to him, and I could tell that he had had Christian stuff. You know, he knew some stuff in Scripture. So someone had been after him, you know. Or he was in church or something. But right at that point, he's, you know, a drug addict and stuff. And uh, so I said to him, Jesus Christ will take you right now just as you are. He could not take that. He says, no, he couldn't take me as, as I am. I says, that's what he came for. Take you as you are. And then he cleans us up after. Anyway, for whatever reason... He just couldn't handle that. And he left town. His friend came the next day and says, what did you do to him? He says, I don't think I did anything. He left town. He left town. His friend got born again, serving God today. So thank God for that. But then a couple of months later, he's back. And I, I told you this story, but he's in church with a little girlfriend. His friend talked him into coming to church. There he is sitting in the back and noticed him. And when the altar call, altar call came, his girlfriend stands up, starts coming, and he grabs her, tries to pull her back. She shook him off. Sometimes you have to shake them off, girls. Sometimes you have to shake them off, boys, because they'll stop you from your destiny. She came down, told you before, you know, short, short miniskirt, and she kneels at the altar, and a shorter altar than this, Leans over. Nothing under her skirt. And this older lady sitting in the front, she just took her coat off the chair, went over, knelt beside her, just wrapped that chair around her, or that coat around her, and led her to Jesus. Two weeks later, they were both in a car accident, decapitated like that. She made it. We know she made it. But we don't know if he made it. My hope is he made it. Yeah. And somewhere along that two weeks, he finally said okay to God. Mm-hmm. But even then, we believe, we believe for long life. We believe for protection. But I tell you, the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. That's why today, if you're fooling around, you need to, you need to commit your ways to the Lord. Because in that place is your protection. And your joy, the end result of it, yeah. is that he brings you into his joy. He brings you into his kingdom where there's no evil. Where there's no evil. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. No evil. It says in uh, Matthew 13, in the Amplified, 14th verse, because... Well, the, the disciples before this are talking to Jesus and says, you know, how come you talk to people in parables, uh, but, you know, you, you explain things to us? 
And he says, it fulfills a prophecy in Isaiah. He says, because it is given permanently unto you to get to know the mysteries. It's given to you permanently. You. Those who hear his voice. Not everybody else, but he, those that hear his voice. It's, it's the kingdom of, the things until now secret of the kingdom of heaven. He came to tell you that he brought the kingdom of heaven. And that he has given you authority and dominion in that kingdom. Two kingdoms, only two. He has given you authority in that kingdom. That's our call. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, it, we can be doing the simplest things on earth. But I tell you what, in there, God has some kind of thing going on. Because he wants his kingdom to someone that's working in the sewer, to someone that's up on top of the building, you know, the high tower, some CEO or king or whatever. He wants his kingdom come to every dominion on the earth. There's all kinds of dominions. There's a dominion actually called the Dominion of Canada. No, I don't know if there's any other country called a dominion. But the, our founding fathers called us the Dominion of Canada. Well, we have a greater dominion over that dominion. And it's so interesting, the scriptures are all over, <laughs> all over Parliament. You must really bug them. But it's all over, it's all over Parliament, you know, <laughs> engraved in stone. So much, so much Jesus stuff in Parliament. Uh, anyway. I enjoyed that part. But it, but it also means there's, there's a root there that's, that's righteous and that we can pull on that root. Thank you, Father. The things until now secret of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. But bless, so, so, you know, it's not given. So when people don't understand why you serve God, if people don't, well, you said, like it's a fairy tale or... You know, it says those, those that are ending in destruction, those that are lost, they think it's all nonsense. The Bible tells you that. The Bible tells you that. The Holy Spirit give you revelation of who he is. You didn't come up smart. He, ca he came to you personally and give you revelation that Jesus is the Son of God. Follow after him. You know, and, and that's the only way that it's going to happen with anyone else. We expect people to act like Christians. Now, we have a right to expect morality in the sense of, you know, it's not a good thing to kill. You know, it's not a good thing to beat people up. I mean, this, this thing's as, a, as a, a citizen of a country that we have the right to defend, right? But if you're talking to people who aren't Christians, don't expect them to have the revelation you have. It's stupid. You think, wow, they should know. How can they not see? Well, I'm sorry, but you didn't see either. You didn't see either. And that guy's friend, the one that died, that guy's friend, I talked to about the other week. He was yelling and screaming in our drop-in center. And just vicious, you know. And I said to the Lord, well, I just said, I didn't say to the Lord, I said, he's the last one that'll come in. Yeah. And the Lord said to me, watch this. Yeah. That's the night he came in. Serve God till today. He still serves God today. Watch this. You'd, if anyone's around your life, many times may be breaking your heart. And God's saying to you, watch this. You keep praying, you keep believing. Watch this. Because it's spiritual revelation. You know, many times I, be I really believe in uh, having understanding, uh, proving scripture. You know, we have more proof, living proof, historical proof of what we believe than anywhere, anytime, anything else. So I believe in knowing that stuff. I do. But the bottom, and, and also you can turn someone's head who thought, well, I never thought of it that way before. So there is knowledge. There is wisdom in talking to people. It's like, oh, I, yeah, 
Okay, I never thought of that before. Or you have a, you know, a good conversation, a kind conversation with somebody. But when it comes to spiritual knowledge, remember what Peter said, you are the, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus said to him, flesh and blood didn't show you that, but my father in heaven. So when we pray, we pray for able workers to go out into the harvest field. And we pray for revelation. We are not smart enough. Because it has to be spiritual. It has to be spiritual. That's why we pray in the spirit. That's why we pray for people. That's why we proclaim. The, so much authority we've got. To, to bring forth the souls of men. And women and children. And I say men, you know, it's mankind I'm talking about. But blessed are your eyes. For they see. And your ears. For they hear. Come on, eh? What is God showing you? Whether you're new to this or been around for 50 years, he shows you things. He speaks to you. For they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you heard and have not heard them. The Messiah has come. The kingdom is now on the earth. His kingdom now taking authority over the kingdom of hell. His, do you know, so this, this uh, oh, it's way, way too complicated. I mean, it just boggles my mind about stuff uh, that happened in the Tower of Babel and, and uh, you know, how uh, there was authority, actually, demonic realm, authority given to the different regions of the earth. And we, so all these dominions that are on the earth, still on the earth, and you look at some of that, you know, I don't know if you read the book, The Return of the Gods, small g. It is amazing, amazing, historically, what is now on the earth that was like, like 1,500 years ago. It was a big deal. 3,000 years ago, it was big. And these gods have come back. These gods have come back. So we're fighting realms, heavenly realms of things. Heavenly realms of things. But it's interesting, Jesus says, uh, I, I, saw, I saw Satan falling from earth. When did he see Satan falling? When they were going out two by two to share the gospel. What we do on the earth affects the gospel, affects what's going on in the heavenlies. And then there's a time, I, I don't believe in one person saying, I'm going to take down the angel over, uh, the demonic angel over Edmonton. Well, hopefully you're ignored. Because you really can get beat up. But, see, when God's pulling the ecclesia, the church, the authority together, and then there's a point, he's going to do some stuff. Through those who are tuned in to those who are spiritually minded. So it's not just one or two leaders or or, uh, you know, uh, the intercessors going after something. It's like suddenly we're all, we're all in one accord. Yes. Uh, that Jesus Christ is going to have Edmonton. Yes. That Jesus Christ is going to have Edmonton and area. That Jesus Christ is going to get our schools. Then we all begin to be one voice. And the power of dominion takes over. The power of dominion takes over. Not our, not our own little thing, but the power of dominion takes over. Why? Because the ecclesia has been given dominion on the earth. Ecclesia is a word for church. It's, a, it's, a, it's where they came and had, it's an authority structure. It's a place of authority. Hallelujah. For he has rescued us. Colossians 1.13. From the dominion, the dominion of darkness. And brought us into the kingdom, the kingdom of the son he loves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He commissioned us. Commissioned us. And like Venice was saying today, but the power that he's given us, even the power he's given us in Jesus' name, that name above every name, the name of Jesus. It's interesting. I was listening to someone this week, and he was talking about uh, he had a demonic realm experience. And I thought, 
this really must happen more than we think, because I had exactly the same experience. And it was when I, I was in the Jesus house, and I just had a confrontation with a witch. And, uh, and she left, and I didn't think too much of it. But in the middle of the night, I wake up, and I'm being choked by a demon. And, I, you know, I could see, like, the eyes in the darkness, but I didn't, couldn't see what the shape it was. And, and I couldn't, I was paralyzed. I couldn't talk. But you know, I knew one thing. I think this guy had exactly the same experience. I knew one thing. I had to get out the name of Jesus. And the minute I finally went, Jesus, <laughs> that thing, let go. Let go. And, you know, they hang around, hang around until they don't hang around anymore because they know they can't paralyze you. They can't kill you. Uh, because things do hang around. I had another experience, something like it. Years later, and it was a weird thing. It was a, a spirit that had a big woman's hat on. <laughs> Strange. And I had to jump out of bed. I literally had to jump out of bed and face that thing down. And I realized it was the spirit of Jezebel. And I had to face that thing down. There are things, but I see in the spirit, I see things. Not everybody will or has to. But you do need to know that it's not just you. That the dominion of God is in you. And there's a dominion out there that wants to sidetrack you. It can do something bad to sidetrack you, or it can just get your mind thinking something else. It can get you in another direction from the calling and purpose of God in your life. Because you are called to bring the kingdom. Whether you're a little kid or 100 years old, the dominion of God is in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. How, how, do, we, how do we do that? Let's just finish with this. 2 Corinthians 10.3. Uh, would the team come up? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the, to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and being in readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I, this is major talking about the mind here. Uh, you know, your authority, your authority in your own mind, tearing down those things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. That you say, well, God's saying this and your mind is fighting it. It's also even a bigger picture it says, we do not war after the flesh. This isn't about how good we are. How many here have had victories? I think probably everyone's had victories. How many of you were perfect when you had that victory? <laughs> Any hands? Oh, Melody. Well, we'll have you lay hands on us after. And how many were perfect after the victory? And yet God gave you victory. So many times I think, uh, though we walk in the flesh, we think, oh, my goodness, you know, I have this problem or I need to get over that problem. Uh, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about, it actually means earthy. It means personality or even condition. We're created from the earth, aren't we? We're created from the earth. That's where we started. But the image of who you are is of God. So the flesh is earthy. Even personality, even means personality. And you don't have the power to fight what you need to fight. If you, even if you have this overpowering, courageous personality. But I tell you, it puts us all in the same level field here. If you feel you're like timid, God's saying, no, you're not holding back because of that personality. Because you have dominion. So whether you're the introvert or the extrovert. If you're the extrovert, where's an introvert here? I could probably find a few. <laughs> the introverts won't put up their hand, but yeah. <laughs> no matter, or somewhere in between. It's not your personality that has the power over devils. 
Hmm. Created from the earth. So our, our power has to be heavenly. See, it's not earthly. It's heavenly. And when we try to do stuff in the flesh, oh, my goodness. By our own power. That doesn't mean, you know, it's, it, it's a, you really have to pray through some of this stuff. Because some, there's times where you stand, you stand up. There's times you need to do things, you know, in the realm. But you actually have authority in this realm and the other realm. You have, two, you are, have authority in two realms. Because God has given you authority on the earth. Mankind has authority on the earth. That's why the devil wanted that dominion. Mankind has authority on the earth. The devil uses man, and God uses man. But God leads, and the devil drives. Hallelujah. We do not war from the conditions on the earth. Hallelujah. But we war through the name of Jesus. We war knowing where we stand. We're not going after victory. He's already given us victory. And from that place of victory, we stand against the fights of the enemy. You cannot be an overcomer if you didn't have to overcome something. How many know being a believer doesn't make everything smooth? Wouldn't that be nice? But then we'd be in heaven. So. But being a believer means he puts some fight in you. And courage is a major thing in walking with him. And they were, you go forward. When you want to go backwards, you go forward. You go forward today. Maybe you've been backing up from stuff. Go forward with him today. Go forward today. Hallelujah. We have the power of his name. Thank you, Father. Press on. Press through. Press on. If you don't have anything that you're pushing against today, it'll probably, in a few days you do. Because we live in a crazy time. We, live, we work, and you know, and our families are, can be beat up. And our city, wow. We live in these times. God didn't put you on the earth in 1950. Thank God, but he didn't. Put, even though there were some really good things in 1950, he didn't put you on the earth in the dark ages. Can you say thank you, Jesus? He didn't even put you on the earth when Jesus walked the earth. Today's a better day because this is the day he put you on the earth. And if he put you on the earth, then you're able to receive from him what you need for this time period. What you need to protect your family. What you need to know, uh, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? You see, the kingdom of heaven, I tell you, uh, start praying, the Bible says. Believe the word, the Bible says. Put on the helmet of righteousness, the Bible says. You know, put on, put on that... That get the sword of the Holy Ghost. Get the power of the word. And that scripture in Ephesians, it tells you how to totally armor up. Because you do have an enemy. And the armor is strengthening. It says, and, and the armor even goes to your feet. It says, you bring the gospel of peace. That power of peace. That puts chaos down. How much, how much has God given you? That's why when we start feeling bad or feeling sorry or overwhelmed, you got to stop. Just stop. Sometimes you have to brain. Stop thinking this stuff. I'm going to think about what God said about me. I'm going to think about the dominion. I don't know maybe all that God has for my life. But I know of today, if I know of today, if I'm with him, Eden meant presence, and they were kicked out of the presence, but you get to be in the presence. You get to be with him. You get to pray. You get to worship. And from that place, 
God leads you. You don't need all the answers. You just need to be led. Hallelujah. And you may already have it in your heart, but I believe God's going to start giving dreams and visions to this house. And it's going to open up things in your lives. And you're going to say, that's the direction God has for me today. And I'm going to take courage and walk in it. Amen. Can you do that last song we sang?
Hallelujah. Perfect words. Perfect words this morning. Perfect words.